time we were all rebuilding and the other end of the scale players were going out. But it was fortunate that Darren Jarman was really in the twilight of his career at that stage. And, and we just used him in the middle of the ground. He, he won the best and fairest in 95 by a street. Hunter tagged him out of the match when they played Footscray. And Hawthorne lost that. Of course, uh, Jarman, that was one of his holiday games. Collins to Jarman. He'll have to go. He's got to beat two of them. He gets a nice bounce. He needs a good hand pass. He's got one. On the run is Jarman, who certainly made a difference to Hawthorne's midfield after serving two weeks suspension. Still he goes, Jarman. Still he goes, Jarman. Birkin turned to Peck at just about St Kilda's best player. Jarman tried to clean him up. Hand pass from McDonald. Sits in front of Jarman. He'll go for goal. One bounce. Onto the left foot. Bang he goes and puts it through. Great. Oh, was definitely Jar's best year. He just uh, he destroyed the competition. He was brilliant. Played a lot of the time on the ball, and and Jar sometimes had a problem if he didn't get on ball and he had to sit on a half forward flank, and he got tagged by a particularly good defender. He had trouble getting into the ball, into the game. But once he got on the ball, I mean, he just cut loose. And 95, he virtually played on ball all year, and he just destroyed the opposition. I mean, he uh, he won the best and fairest pretty easily. I think he was runner up in the Brownlow. Probably, uh, probably would have been entitled to win it with the season he had. Unfortunately, we didn't have as good a year as a team, which probably didn't help him. Um, he just, he would get 30, 35 touches every week, which most good on ballers do when they're when they're in form. But his possessions are different to most others. I mean, if he wasn't kicking goals, he was setting them up, and he was just doing some amazing things. Away go the Hawks again. Shane Crawford through the cricket pitch area. Barnes can't reach him. Up the ground is Langford to Shepherd. Off to Jarman, who's been quiet, but he's kicked for goal. Great start to the Hawks. Plays on quickly out to Barnes, who's been mentioned, seems to be by himself all the time. Over to Hall, who offers the run to Scholl. Back to Hall. Hall in trouble. Gone. Stolen by Jarman. Jarman short. And fantastic skills of Darren Jarman. Cummings, there was a free kick in that passage of play, but the advantage with the Essendon. Great smother, Jarman. Jarman into an open goal. That's probably the best year I've ever played, no question. Um, probably more ki consistent than anything. It was just um, it was a real consistent year. And uh, yeah, I just loved, as I said before, I was getting a bit older, so I was one of the, the leaders out there now. And um, it was just, yeah, the pressure was on to, to perform every week. A hand pass worth about 15 metres. Over the ball is Woods, he's playing. Concedes some ground, gets it across to Jarman. Oh. Brilliant catch. <laughs> Mitten kind of on the lead. How was the kick? Centering kick up towards half forward. And the timely mark is taken by Alex McDonald. He wants to get on with it quickly. It's effective. Jarman is usually deadly accurate. He should go from there. And he does. The kick over his head. Now he's fumbled. Now he's got problems. Waiting for a knighthood there. Down on one knee. The hand pass taken away by Jarman. Jarman bouncing up towards the middle of third bounce. In a quarter where scoring hasn't been easy. Oh, look at that. Just the perfect steal. He made Ronald Biggs look like an amateur then. Looks like Hudson is. He's not going to take the kick. We'll keep an eye on him. Hudson kicks down towards half forward. Taylor couldn't take it. Crawford gets the hand pass to Jarman. Here's the first one. Jarman has gold. I'd loved him to have stayed. And of all people, I wanted him to stay more than anyone else because I knew how important he was. But he was an Adelaide boy, a hometown boy. His wife Sue was from there. They have family there, they had kids. It, it was just all right for him to go home and, and get back into that atmosphere. And obviously, I mean, Adelaide would have been silly not to move heaven and earth to get him there. He played in the Premiership side at Hawthorne. He then won a best and fairest or a club champion. He was pretty, pretty close to his family. I mean, he was really a, a family man. And I think it was both he and Sue that really wanted to head back home to Adelaide. And it was at a time as well where things were really happening in football with the AFL and the, uh, the Adelaide Crows. And I suppose he saw that as a natural extension of his development that he had to come to Melbourne and it was Hawthorne that he came to, to learn the caper, to serve his apprenticeship and, and make an impression in VFL and at Hawthorne, which he certainly did. And once he got to that stage, he just about achieved it all but had always had the ambition to finish off his football back in Adelaide. The, the only pressure that came would have been from me because I knew that my time was coming up mm. 